Welcome to yet another webinar by ReachLaw. This time we are going to talk about India BIS and specifically the basics there of this will be a session one of three sessions. And uh, today, as said, going through the basics, what, who, when, and why, what is India BIS? And today we are joined by, uh, by uh, Gagan and Rashmi and uh, I will be your moderator. I'm Fredrik Johansson. I'm a partner, head of sales at REACH. I have a long background in chemical regulatory and product regulatory uh, uh, work and uh, happy to be in this, this webinar, of course, to moderate and, uh, and leave it up to the subject matter experts, Gagan and Rashmi, to discuss this further. But without further ado, Gagan, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you, Frederick. And, uh handling this uh, webinar. So my name is Gagan. I'm uh, based out of New Delhi, which is our uh, uh, office in India. And uh, I've been working in, in, in REACH and REACH-like regulations since uh, more than 14 years now. And uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to support uh, uh, all the attendees. Thank you for joining us today. And as I uh, we have three series, so it's uh, basically an important uh, subject which we have uh, would like to uh, explain to the to the participants in 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 the better way so i'm happy to assist and uh, uh, look forward to your participation and rush me please thank you Freddie, and hello everyone and uh, i welcome you all to the first session of our india bis webinar uh, I am Rashmi Srivastava and I work as Senior Manager at Reach Law India, where I manage BIS certification and other Indian uh, compliance requirement. In today's webinar, uh, I will be guiding you uh, through the BIS uh, certification, what BIS certification is, who needs it, and how it impacts manufacturer. So uh, let's get started and I will pass this to Fedi so, to take this further. Thank you, Fedi. Thank you, Rashmi, and thank you, Gagan. Okay, so just uh, before we dive into the the, uh, the basics of this, I'll go through some of the uh, the uh, uh, introduction to reach law, obviously, and the agenda. But before that, just give you an overview of the three different sessions we have in this webinar series. So, understanding India BIS license for foreign manufacturers. So today, as said, we have session one where we look at the basics. I'll go through the agenda in just a, a bit in a separate slide. Then session two will be in a, a couple of well, is it next week already 19th, where we look at the uh, uh, licensing process, step by step guide how to do this and cl completing that uh, uh, business license process. Session three will be 26th of November, where we look at these uh, uh, more the uh, costs sectors affected and a more thorough Q and A on the business, India Biz license topic. All right, so for this session one today, we'll just, uh, we have 45 minutes, albeit I suspect we'll go a bit over time, so bear with us. We'll start with the reach law brief, then we'll hand it over to the to the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of this uh, presentation, which is, of course, looking at the uh, introduction into the uh, Bureau of Indian Standards, the BIS. Then we'll look at what is a, a BIS certification, uh, who needs it, it uh, and then also what is uh, when is this uh, BIS certification uh, required and why is it important? Then also look at the, this uh, BIS certification for foreign manufacturers and the role of this authorized Indian representative, this A, uh, A I R AIR uh, acronym you will see in, in this presentation also. Then we look at some challenges uh, in BIS compliance and some recent updates before then going to the Q&A session and ending this uh, webinar with the contact details at the end. I said probably a bit longer than 45 minutes, so please bear with us. Some practical information, you can submit questions using the chat, chat uh, function. We'll try to answer those during, during the Q&A sessions, albeit we will start with the questions that were submitted uh, as part of the registration process. But if we have time, I hope we will have, uh, we'll take a, a couple of those questions you may come up with during this uh, session. As before, uh, 
a recording of this webinar will be put on our uh, YouTube channel called Reach Law Talks within a couple of days, so you will be able to find it there. And of course, feel free to send us feedback. Uh, we're ha happy to have that, whatever that is. Anything that makes us uh, uh, develop further and become better at this is always welcome. So we'll start with just a quick update or rather uh, just a go through a quick go, go through of reach law so who are we so we provide support for reach and reach like chemical regulations uh, globally and also now of course encompassing uh, the india bis standard we'll talk about that separately so here on the slide you will see all the re uh, regulations that we support natively meaning we have offices in these countries where we can indigenously and natively so as said support so for example um, uh, in manchester for uk reach where we have, can provide only representative services the same then for turkey in istanbul the same for for kosha uh, k reach more specifically in south korea and of course in the eu through the helsinki office here where i'm calling in from and uh, the latest uh, newcomer to this family is uh, Ukraine Kiev office which will deal with Ukraine reach and CLP related topics and of course provide only representative services but for today India will be the focus and more specifically India BIS and of course as you saw already my colleagues are joining in from India to discuss this India reach is uh, on the slides but it is uh, uh, still pending so nothing happening on that front yet but if something happens then of course we would support that also so we do indeed provide a full suite of market access services for chemical products that you want to place in these different markets so we uh, for example provide only representative services in in all of these jurisdictions you, you saw, and now for BIS, it's a, a bit different setup, but we also provide these air support services, which we'll look at in uh, during this uh, presentation. Uh, but essentially a full suite of services related to, to having your chemical products comply with these different requirements in different jurisdictions. But today, as said, India BIS and related services will be the focus and thereof we do again provide a full set of services uh, related to this so for example if you are a foreign manufacturer we can help you absolutely with this in india bis license as a foreign manufacturer for your sites we also provide this uh, authorized india representative air so to speak appointment services and also support for if you have a, your own appointee that you want to appoint but then also providing license support for domestic manufacturing sites in India, obviously, uh, support with inspectors uh, when they're doing their audits, uh, factory audits, which are a mandatory, uh, mandatory component of this uh, license, you will see, but also other services such as uh, testing support, uh, IT related portal support, and also the marking, I, I, ISI marking and labeling related support and of course, just uh, managing the, the license per se, ma maintaining it and renewals and, and so forth. And any consultancy and training that is needed related to India BIS. This will become much more uh, tangible and apparent as you go through these uh, webinar series for, together with us. So happy to have you here. And just before I hand it over to my colleagues, uh, just also wanted to mention that we do have our YouTube channel called Reach Law Talks, where you will find this webinar also posted in a couple of days. But uh, please have a look if you like, and please subscribe to our channels. And of course, if you like the content, please feel free to, to give a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm, so to speak. And also, uh, it's a good resource for you to uh, get on top of many different chemical re regulatory topics, such as, well, India Biz now for today. So have a look, please. And before I give it over to my uh, colleagues, just uh, the usual 
disclaimer and copyright so the content of this presentation is for general information purposes only and it's not to substitute for pro professional consulting expert services so so take that with, with a grain of salt so to speak so any actions you may take based on these uh, uh, this presentation is of course at your own risk we present no uh, representation or, or warranties to this uh, content of these slides and so forth now that I've made our lawyers happy with this disclaimer and copyright, which you can always uh, stop in the YouTube uh, videos to read more carefully. But now I'll just hand it over to the to the bulk of this or, or the interesting bit of this presentation. Hand over to Gagan, and in the meanwhile, I'll just terminate my video feed to give a bit more bandwidth for our attendees who are joining from far places around the globe so gagan the floor is yours please thank you thank you frederick for for the introduction and once again thank you participants for joining this uh, joining this webinar and we have very good questions <clears throat> which we will of course take up in this session schedule for that uh, so so I will I will introduce uh, BIS in general, and uh, I will also explain you that how this structure is set up. So you have some some foundation when you start working on this, or you want to have more interest on this. So it is something important uh, uh, doing business in India uh, now in future. So it's important that you know about the whole structure, how it is set up. So maybe next slide, please. So if you if you see this uh, BIS, uh, of course the name standards as Bureau of Indian Standard, and uh, this is uh, this is an authority which is implementing uh, the regulation, and uh, this BIS authority is coming under Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, because they aim to protect their interest, the consumer interest, and and of course the other. So it 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 covers a lot of products so it's i would say that a lot of product specific uh, uh, controls are there and of course this is more of a technical standard technical regulation and uh, this bis authority which is uh, of course located at new delhi india is for, was founded in 1986 so it is fairly old and known body in india which is uh, which is uh, protecting the consumer interest and uh, and bringing more quality standards uh, for companies to comply with which focuses and it's more growing in the sense that uh, when we see that uh, uh, reading the annual reports uh, you can see that how the how the expansion is uh, coming up uh, with more alignment uh, with the global uh, standards meaning iso so the companies uh, can easily uh, do business with india and of course if they are having their own offices in india they would like to have same setup and standard so it is something important that the alignment is already happening and more changes are coming they are working with uh, five regional offices within india and then they have branch offices around 38 in india we are a large country so bis have several uh, offices within india to manage domestic uh, compliances and uh, this is the logo as you see on the right hand side uh, all your uh, documentations uh, licenses uh, shall be at this logo which is coming from the authority and it's a it's a kind of uh, framework which i will also discuss in the next slide is uh, is basically bis act which is the main legislation uh, how this authority is set up and uh, what is the organization of this authority we will see that but this is the main act which is uh, which is now uh, giving uh, powers to bis to to implement this and then we have uh, corresponding rules and regulations which we will also focus that uh, and uh, my colleague will of course uh, will explain that uh, what section of this uh, regulation we are covering in this series and specific to the alignment to the uh, the products and the segments of the interest from the audience side then as i mentioned it's more of a uh, quality it's a quality specific regulation so it ensures that the right quality is reaching customers 
and uh, that is why what is the main mandate is to satisfy the customer needs for quality so it's always the quality that <clears throat> company should focus uh, handling this and uh, the objective is of course uh, as i mentioned is the harmonizing the standardization which uh, with global with global associations uh, conformity assessment is the main you have uh, already the technical standards quality standards so it's a similar conformity assessment which ensures that uh, your product should meet uh, those requirements and the quality assurance and then uh, how to meet this uh, compliance requirement is something which we will discuss uh, so uh, more information you can find we have provided some uh, links in this slide so for example the foreign manufacturers they have a dedicated uh, department in the BIS at New Delhi the foreign manufacturers needs to apply for their license through New Delhi head office only they are not uh, applying through the regional offices or branch offices only the domestic manufacturers uh, who are located across India they are using the regional offices and branch offices to manage their licenses but foreign manufacturers needs to apply to the headquarters where they have a dedicated department on foreign manufacturer certification scheme. So next slide, please. So this is how uh, the Bureau of Indian Standard is set up. Of course, they have a dedicated website which provides a lot of information if you uh, would like to know more about BIS. But what, <clears throat> what in basics they are looking at is the standard development. They have a good team uh, who's developing standards. So industry and technological advancements, uh, digitalization, all kind of security and also the product, uh, how the industry is looking at uh, that it's uh, sustainable and things like that. So the product, uh, I think uh, standard development is the main uh, main uh, setup that is uh, working with uh, closely with industry, uh, also the authorities we will see what kind of authorities are involved in in the next session and also this session then we have uh, multiple sectors as I mentioned that multiple uh, products are listed uh, which require this uh, compliance and stakeholders are industry representative government bodies and of course other uh, experts who are helping the standard development and standards once developed uh, will also be renewed in future based on the uh, advancements and technological advancements. So it is also, I think, uh, ongoing work and uh, uh, certification is important. Uh, they are uh, uh, they have a mandate to certify the products uh, to so that the companies can manufacture and uh, consumer can uh, trust that the product they are using is meeting the right quality and there will be no harm if they use those products bearing those certifications is something which is uh, ensuring the quality and safety then quality assurance department is uh, taking uh, over some administrative work uh, during the process of certification and post certification is testing inspection is during the certification and post certification they have uh, surveillance uh, which we will discuss also in the session series but this is also that quality assurance department is taking care of then consumer protection also they have i think applications you can uh, download bis care applications on your mobile phones uh, and uh, can have real-time inputs so consumer and also can track uh, the licenses uh, everything i think they are also enhancing this interface and information sharing mechanism but consumer protection uh, is again uh, where education a lot of advertisement is coming through the newspapers locally in india also the social media channels are very active uh, twitter and uh, all all these are quite active and you can also see in in the bis website of course uh, the regulatory framework uh, they are also responsible that what challenges are coming so what uh, uh, i think feedback they are getting from the applicants and of course in general the consumer needs to be re-evaluated uh, to implement the right policies so they will go back to the authorities and uh, see that what changes we should consider uh, because they are uh, having a lot of information so they can uh, of course uh, use this information to comply and uh, see that it is working and meeting the uh, objective so compliances and standards and changes and also the regulatory framework uh, inputs but they are not making any 
decisions on the regulations that is not bis is implementing body not uh, they are not the authorities which we will you will see in the next part of this presentation of course uh, international collaboration is uh, something important uh, with the standard bodies as i mentioned earlier iso for example to see that uh, the standard is not outdated uh, uh, from uh, the global uh, industrialization and the products uh, meeting the same testing requirements which are uh, coming and the companies can comply with they have a standard requirements and uh, so it's also kind of ongoing collaboration activities so next slide please Coming to the BIS Act, uh, I'm providing the legal text uh, reference in the source, but this is something uh, to understand how this is structured. So the uh, now the important here is I think uh, chapter two, which you can see that the how is the organization is set up. So what is the BIS? Uh, what, who is heading the BIS organization? So in India, all the authorities have director general as a head of the organization. Uh, it could be executive director or director general mostly in India it's a director general and then you have other officers and departments uh, director deputy director generals and things like that so they have quite a hierarchy to follow but this is also available at BIS website and uh, the framework is mentioned in the BIS Act how uh, the organization will be set up and how it will function who's uh, reporting and who's responsible so that kind of profile and work uh, is important to appeal and see how the changes so whom you have to meet and things like that so it's it's also important chapter to understand how the organization is set up and how decision and communication is flowing within the organization then chapter 3 is talking about the Indian standards certification and licenses which is like practical uh, information so I would say uh, we have highlighted like uh, chapter 12 on conformity assessment is important grant of license um, then you have prohibition uh, obligation of under uh, license holders so these are some of the important uh, topics for the uh, scheme that we are talking today uh, but uh, this is also kind of uh, like framework of how it is written and uh, the acts are generally uh, important to understand uh, the base uh, base how it is structured in order to apply the changes in the regulations then you have uh, i think uh, chapter 4 to talking about the powers uh, and uh, and then chapter 5 uh, it's important to have penalty and uh, of for contravention so uh, all kind of offenses and uh, penalties we have covered also today in this session is coming under chapter 5 so when you have to look at these information we would recommend to refer uh, act of 2016 next slide please then about the um, from the act uh, what we are looking at is um, in this series is scheme one specifically scheme one which is uh, uh, defining by the conformity regulation 2018 this regulation 2018 is the base regulation but then you have certain amendments also to this conformity regulation which is also important to follow which section is getting updated and what is happening with the changes but this is scheme one which we will focus in this series three series webinar and uh, this is the regulation which uh, is used to handle the practical getting license for your products so that you can do business with india or you can manufacture products in india and then sell to your customers so this is where you need to follow this is the important regulation you need to read also if you are working and uh, defining a project so this regulation is conformity regulation 2018 and uh, this has uh, uh, 12 important chapters you can see on the right hand side and uh, this is the let's say the conformity assessment scheme and uh, regulation is mainly assessment scheme which will give you your BIS license or the standard mark. So these are the terms which you will, I think, get familiar in this series. But uh, these are the 12, I think, chapters. Um, important is, of course, scope uh, definition is always important to uh, relate this in other documentations of the legal text. And uh, then you have uh, process. Uh, what is the process? Uh, and uh, then fees. 
labeling requirements is also important uh, item which is listed there conditions of license uh, what uh, what kind of obligations and uh, requirements uh, are there to maintain once you have the license uh, validity of the license renewal of the license and changes in the scope of the license so you might need to add more products uh, or grades in the license so those things are covered how you do that in practice <clears throat> then suspension and cancellation when it will happen uh, you can also find this so in India it's always a show cause notice so you don't have expect that the uh, you know simple cancellation will come which is always important to monitor the communication changes and uh, see that you are aware of these changes and responding to the uh, to the letters or the notices you are getting from BIS in timely manner. Uh, these are important aspects of uh, maintaining compliance and being a responsible uh, company having BIS license. So next slide, please. So this is also uh, under the introduc introduction Im important is the Indian standard. Uh, you will not get a conformity without any standard. Of course, it's a product uh, product license. Uh, it's not a factory license. It's a product license. So it's always goes by the product standard. What is the product uh, that we have talking about for which you need to apply for standard? So let's say on, on your right hand side, you can uh, see that uh, we have uh, listed para xylene as a as an Indian standard and Indian standards are always available. Uh, you can uh, you can basically apply for it uh, and you can have a login. You can uh, you can get access to the license. Sometimes it's paid, sometimes it's free of cost. So from BIA's website, you can always apply for this and obtain the license. It has to be updated standard and it covers the all important information that you need to have the license. So scoping is important that, uh, for example, whether it meets your product or you have a different product, uh, whether the application that you have uh, in India or let's say the customer in India is covered or you have a different. So those are some of the scoping. Uh, uh, I think it's important to have it thoroughly uh, going through this standard. And then there are corresponding standards when you talk about the testing requirements uh, for uh, specific to para xylene. Uh, of course, you will have certain uh, technical uh, uh, requirements that uh, which ensure that it meets the right quality and uh, you will have a corresponding uh, standards for certain testing requirements so and your labeling everything is i think uh, covered here but my colleague will also explain uh, some insights so this is uh, like a product specification what your product should uh, without of course it includes testing but then it carries a lot of information which uh, which is also uh, sometimes updated so the new standard you should also consider uh, whether there are changes that you need to consider uh, in the current license you have. So this standard is established and regulated by BIS and as, as the goal is of course to have a safety, environment protection, uh, public health and then facilitate the trade. So this is uh, where I think standard is one of the most important you know, document that a company should consider before uh, engaging yourself in the BIS process. Next slide please. And here you will see the authorities uh, as I mentioned in the beginning the BIS authority belongs to the Ministry of Consumer Affairs uh, food and public distribution and uh, each ministry has a department which is uh, consumer affairs in this case and then uh, BIS is a uh, implementing body but they are not making product uh, let's say regulations or uh, that you will see uh, I have mentioned in this slide is quality control orders so each product uh, that uh, you will see in the scheme one will have a product regulation product regulation term is not yet defined in the regulatory text but it's easy for audience to understand it's a product regulation where the product you need to apply and get the license so this is uh, the quality control order is a regulation which is uh, defined in this uh, BIS conformity assessment 2018 and uh, if you uh, do not comply then the BIS Act uh, will be linked to the QCO meaning that uh, what kind of uh, offenses and penalties will be coming in that if it is non-compliant. So the quality control order there are 15 um, regulators and authorities in, in general which are line ministries 
uh, in India covering various products. So let's say in in today's we are covering uh, approximately 15 uh, 15 ministries. Uh, recently, the new ministry was added, and um, uh, be it uh, Ministry of Health, then Environment, uh, Textile, Steel, Heavy Equipments, Leather, Footwear. Uh, promotion industry, industrial trade, and uh, and you have uh, road transport, uh, renewable energy, and agricultures, and then chemicals and petrochemicals. So it's it has a lot of uh, I think products uh, which you will see, but uh, these are the authorities which uh, decides on the quality control order. They notify quality control order, and then it is implemented once it is accepted. So they can change the QCO, but not the BIS. BIS is the only implementing body. So once the quality control orders are uh, uh, implemented, then uh, you need to apply for the license. That's how it goes. But more information and more process, I think you will learn from my colleague. So next slide, please. So this is the slide on the QCO, which is quality control order, which is a regulation that you need to consider. It's uh, basically uh, again, uh, uh, I think one or two page uh, regulation, which uh, generally defines and covers your process, linking it to the conformity regulation, which you just saw, and then you have a product uh, standard defined. So it's always product wise. What is the product? that we are talking about then it will also give you the deadline <clears throat> generally it's uh, six months uh, so it's uh, six months from the date of its entry uh, the original uh, quality control order means the first time when the regulation uh, the order comes it's six months and uh, then it also uh, have an amendments and uh, let's say in future something is coming then this is again updated so so this is also to track and then scope is covered here meaning this uh, what all it covers is mentioned and then you have to go to the indian standard to really understand the scoping part of this qco if any uh, changes in the deadline will again the qco will be revised so the standard of the product related details will remain same but your deadline if it is extended then uh, you need to see that the new qco will be notified and of course the penalty for contravention is also mentioned here and on the right hand side this is how you will see the the uh, quality control order so with this i think uh, i will uh, uh, request my colleague to take you through the more deeper understanding of this and uh, explain you more about uh, what the certification is thank you over to you rashmi Thank you, Gagan. Uh, thank you for explaining the best introduction part. So uh, by now participants, you must be having a fair idea of BIS. So uh, best, uh, we'll see like what is best certification and who needs it. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, best certification uh, is a mark of quality and uh, safety assurance for products uh, sold in India. So if we talk about objectives, uh, the main objective quality. So this certification uh, ensures that product conforms to Indian standard and uh, are safe for use, environment friendly and uh, reliable in performance. So it helps consumer trust the quality of the product they purchase. So uh, this uh, this certification uh, could be of two types. So basically we need to have uh, Indian standard for any certification. So if a product or good has an Indian standard in place, so uh, we can apply for either for a mandatory certification or it can be a voluntary certification also. So some products uh, uh, which requires mandatory certification that are enforced through this quality control orders uh, needs a mandatory certification. However, uh, some voluntary certifications can also be applied by manufacturers uh, and this will this uh, enhance consumer uh, confidence and uh, marketability. So these two certifications can be applied by the manufacturer. And these certified products uh, are further allowed to use the BIS logo, the ISI mark, and which signifies that uh, the product meets the prescribed standards and has, uh, has passed the BIS rigorous testing. So uh, other, another uh, objective is consumer protection. That is um, 
one of the BIS main goal is to protect the interest of consumer uh, by ensuring that uh, products meet necessary quality and safety standards, thus uh, helping in preventing the circulation of uh, substandard products in the market. Also by promoting standardization, uh, uh, this helps in reducing technical barrier to trade both within India and internationally. So it helps industries uh, comply with international standards to uh, enhance exports. So if we talk about process, uh, we can divide it into broadly into four steps. The first one is uh, application. So uh, this application preparation and submission, this requires a lot of company and product specific information, which has to be uh, submitted to BIS to start the license process. As a next step, uh, there is a factory inspection. So if a factory audit happens uh, and the manufacturing facility is checked for the compliance with standard. Uh, after factory inspection, there is product testing also. The samples are withdrawn from the inspection and those uh, samples are tested in the BIS approved lab for compliance. And if all these are compliant, then uh, BIS grants the license. So uh, after which this mark can be used uh, along with the uh, license number. So this is the main objective and process of uh, BIS certification. Next slide, please. Okay, so the conformity assessment regulation 2018 has different schedules and uh, the schedule two of the conformity assessment has different schemes for certification and registration. So uh, the product category, the process, the requirement and the timeline of each scheme are different uh, under this uh, schedule two. So uh, on the screen, if we see there are major five type of uh, certifications and registration mentioned. The first one is uh, Scheme one, uh, which is also product certification and uh, applies for the foreign manufacturer certification scheme. So uh, those foreign manufacturer who wish to sell their products in India can apply for this certification. And this is the main uh, topic of our webinar. Also, we will discuss more about this in our later series. So uh, under this uh, scheme, uh, the scope covers more than 600 products under different category and it has been in operation since uh, year 2000 and <clears throat> this requires a nomination of an authorized Indian representative which is an individual person and it is a mandatory requirement under this uh, certification scheme. So the process is same as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it starts with the application submission, which is a manual submission to BIS and uh, requires audit of, uh, of, of manufacturing site also. So the grant of license after complying to the requirement uh, allows the use of ISI mark on the product. And uh, this is a 10 digit uh, unique number which manufacturer can use on their products in the label. The second scheme, which is a compulsory registration scheme. This scheme is in operation since uh, 2012, and this is uh, more specific towards uh, electronic and IT products. So uh, this gives an unique registration number to the manufacturer through registration based on uh, self declaration of the conformity of goods and articles as per Indian standard. The major product uh, uh, notified under the schemes are from Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and covers IT and electronic products, but also has uh, some other products from chemicals, textile and uh, renewable energy also. In this, uh, the process of application submission is online and a test request is generated and then a submission of test report is done, which should not be more than 90 days old. And if it further complies the, to the conformity, a registration number is granted. So this uh, scheme also requires an authorized Indian representative for foreign manufacturers. So this uh, marking scheme is all important, whether it is ISI or whether it is a compulsory, uh, compulsory registration scheme. So there is a specific guidance from uh, BIS to use this mark and uh, the size the color scheme and other recommendations are mentioned in the regulation the third scheme which is the management scheme uh, management system certification scheme so this is this gives license to use a standard mark 
for demonstration of conformity of system. So first two schemes which we discussed were on the product, but this is for the system. So for the conformity of system to all requirements of the given Indian standard. So we need to apply for a with a separate application for different management system and these all uh, certification uh, we have prescribed format from BIS which has to be used while applying for these uh, license or registration. Under this theme of the audit premises happens and uh, bureau may time to time ask uh, whether whenever they feel like so this audit may happen and uh, either a license or a certificate of conformity can be granted by the BIS depending upon this uh, application. So standard mark for different management system uh, guidance dimension to use uh, are mentioned in the regulation. The next one is scheme four, which is a certificate of conformity and this uh, in this we get a certificate not a mark. No mark is used in under this uh, certificate of conformity. So under this scheme, uh, a COC is granted, which is certificate of conformity to the products manufactured uh, in a manufacturing premises and conforming to uh, specified requirements given in the standard or part of standard or anything which is essential requirement. So manufacturer shall identify specified requirement given in the standard and uh, uh, or a part of standard and uh, relating to products which is uh, which they intend to get the certificate of conformity. So uh, under the scheme manufacturer can self declare that their products conform to the relevant Indian standard. Uh, but however, uh, they must uh, submit the evidence that their product meet the required standard. So this is a uh, uh, for conformity certificate of conformity. The manufacturer have to submit a declaration here and uh, BIS may uh, require sample to be tested uh, at the BIS, uh, BIS uh, approved labs. And uh, this scheme is typically used for low risk products and or products where the standards are easy to meet and self assessment can be effective. So the last one uh, is scheme 10 certification. So scheme 10 is applicable to products that need to meet specific expectation or requirement as outlined in the relevant Indian standard. Uh, it differs from other schemes by offering the option for manufacturers to choose either a license for a continuous production or a certificate of conformity for batch production. So this flexibility is particularly useful for the products that are not manufactured on a continuous basis, but need to meet uh, high quality standards. So these are the major certification or registration which falls under the schedule two of this conformity regulation 2018. And all of them have a separate department where we, know, we need to submit the application and from where either the registration or the license is granted by the BIS. So that specific department has to be approached for each type of uh, certification. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so now who needs this certification? So uh, both foreign and domestic manufacturer has the requirement to get this certification depending upon the product and they can select a relevant uh, scheme under which the product fall to access the Indian market. So for a foreign manufacturer to market access, there are a uh, foreign manufacturer certification scheme, uh, compulsory registrations, conformity and scheme 10. And for domestic manufacturers, it's a regulatory compliance that they get their product certified for manufacturing those which are under the mandatory certification scheme and the management certification. So these two are majorly for the domestic manufacturers. Next one, please. So uh, this is the product category and we can see some uh, some major categories which require mandatory certifications which are we have broadly divided into segments like chemicals infrastructure materials consumer goods industrial goods and textile where we already have qco in place and uh, at some places date of implementations are enforced meaning that you need a valid license or registration to access indian market and at some places it, it is yet to be enforced but yes for sure the quality control orders for these uh, segments have been uh, already in place next one please
Okay, so this is uh, some new QCOs from different product categories have been added recently in, uh, in last two months. So these are something from the uh, safety of household, commercial and electrical appliances, hand tools, uh, some solar thermal system. So these are very recent QCOs and, they, uh, and uh, soon they will be implemented like some have timeline of one year or six months. So within that timeline, uh, soon it will be implemented after which these products will also require a mandatory licensing or certification to access Indian market. Next one, please. So this is the uh, list of uh, products. Uh, we have 688 items or products under 99 different categories uh, under scheme one which needs mandatory bis license certification to either for foreign manufacturer to access indian market or for domestic manufacturer to produce that in india so these are uh, the full scope under scheme one next one Okay, next is when is the certification required and why it is important? Let's see. Next, please. So when is this certification required? To answer this, whenever we have a product QCO or a draft QCO is notified at WTO means that soon the product will be added in the mandatory list once uh, the given commenting period is over. Generally, the QCO have six months timeline for implementation. And once, uh, once this is published in the gadget, so the manufacturers of those products should gear up to get the compliance once this draft QCO comes or uh, if it is published. So this, is, this makes the uh, product under the mandatory certification and before date of implementation, uh, the license is mandatory after which uh, there will be no market access for foreign manufacturers and no manufacturing for domestic manufacturers. So this is required for market access. This is also export requirement. This gives uh, a brand reputation to the product also as it is a, it is a standard mask which uh, ensures the quality of the product. Next one. So why, why this certification is important? As I mentioned in the previous slide also, it is, it is an obligation for both the foreign manufacturer as well as the domestic manufacturers. So if, if the product QCO is implemented or is about to be implemented, we need a valid BIS license for, ex, for export. For foreign manufacturer, there will be no market access, no export without a license. And for a domestic domestic manufacturer, there will be no manufacturing if they don't have a valid license uh, and they cannot manufacture it at Indian premises. So this certification uh, is a mark quality of quality assurance. It gives market access to the foreign manufacturers. It has obviously a competitive advantage from those who are not having these marks and uh, it, it also helps in easy custom clearance because this is a major requirement if the product is falling under the mandatory list the customs will uh, closely monitor the products coming at the port and in case uh, this the mark is not there or the license number is not there they may block the uh, shipment or uh, the shipment may be returned to the destination so this is also required so the uh, this is why this uh, certification is important for the manufacturers to obtain in time next one okay other than uh, the market access uh, we also have provision of uh, uh, penalty which is in the form of both fine and imprisonment so any violation to the uh, use of mark like to use this mark without license or if invalid license number is used under such circumstances there is a provision of penalty and imprisonment under the BIS Act where a fine or a imprisonment up to certain years can be imposed on the manufacturer who is uh, who is non found non-compliant under the BIS Act so it is important not only to access for accessing Indian market but also to uh, safeguard from these violations, it is important to have a best license on time. Next, please. 
So let's see best certification for foreign manufacturer and role of AIR. Next one. So for foreign manufacturer, as I mentioned earlier, uh, authorized Indian representative is a mandatory requirement to comply with the regulation. So whenever applying for this certification, we need to uh, appoint one AIR, uh, which is an individual person to meet the compliance of this uh, certification. So for foreign manufacturer, there are three options uh, to appoint an AIR. Either they could appoint someone from uh, their own subsidiary. If they, if they have some subsidiary at India, they can appoint a senior person from subsidiary as AIR, or they can uh, appoint uh, one of their importer as AIR, or there is a provision in case both the uh, both the above situation is not feasible, then they can appoint a single individual as authorized Indian representative. So please note that uh, in case of BIS, the AIR is a sing individual person and no entity is appointed as AIR here. So uh, this is a mandatory requirement at the time of application submission only, uh, uh, AIR is nominated and uh, post license also, there is a role and obligation of AIR uh, to meet this compliance requirement. Next one, please. In this slide, we can see what is AIR obligations. So an individual person who is acting as AIR should be an Indian resident. The minimum criteria of education is that he or she should be a uh, graduate by education. Responsible for the compliance, as I mentioned, that uh, there are some uh, requirement of AIR to uh, sign on behalf of licensee at some places after license. So they have to be present and, uh, and uh, uh, comply with the requirement of the regulation. Also, uh, under BIS, an uh, individual person who is acting as AIR can represent only one manufacturing firm or the group entity, meaning one AIR for one manufacturing firm. The AIR should also not have any conflict of interest with the Indian lab because the samples which are tested at the best lab after inspection, so there should be no conflict of interest uh, with the AIR and the lab. Also, uh, the AIR should maintain the records of all the shipments and uh, should proactively communicate with BIS whenever it is required or asked by the BIS. Also, they can provide some technical advocacy and they should be aware with the ongoing changes in the legislation and monitor them so that uh, remain compliant with the license, uh, uh, whatever changes are coming with. So, while selecting or appointing an AIR, there are some recommendations which one should uh, definitely look for. Selection criteria should be uh, using the AIR obligation, but which I mentioned just now, uh, that the, it, he or she should be an Indian resident, should not be already uh, any, acting as an AIR for any other firm, should be a graduate by the education. So these obligations should be, or the criteria should be checked uh, beforehand before appointing anyone as uh, Indian uh, AIR, especially in the case when the person is individual. Uh, in case you are having someone from subsidiary, these obligations are a bit reduced. But in case uh, uh, we are appointing someone individual, then this should be taken care of. Then legal and financial consideration should be there. Uh, please maintain a strong legal contractual agreement with the AIR to safeguard the interest because uh, application documents and other process involves a lot of disclosure of company and specific information. So there should be some contractual agreement in place to, uh, to protect the confidential information with AIR. Also, uh, if AIR is an individual person, the financial consideration should be for that person uh, because acting as an AIR will, uh, will count for some fee. Then uh, reliability, uh, yes, of course, the person should, should be reliable and should be stable, should be present whenever, because BIS uh, as a local representative may ask for a visit or whenever required may communicate. So the person should be stable and available. 
whenever uh, this is required by BIS and accountable for the uh, for the task assigned as as they have to visit BIS for signing of agreement and indemnity post license requirements. So these are the major uh, recommendations uh, to be checked while you are appointing the AIR. Next one, please. Let's see what are the challenges in BIS compliance and uh, some recent updates. Next one. So some major challenges are AIR, AIR appointment and its maintenance. As I mentioned, we have to see specific uh, criteria and we have to uh, check those. So AIR appointment is not an easy task. Be uh, specific while appointing and be careful while appointing the AIR. Then uh, of course, BIS has a complex documentation as it asks for a lot of uh, product specific and company specific information. So this documentation is also complex. Then test method, of course, they ask for uh, uh, all the test methods to be compliant in accordance with the given Indian standard. So not only methods, all equipment should also uh, comply with the, these uh, Indian standards. So this is a challenging part for many times for the manufacturers as they are using some different test methods. So uh, this is then on-site audit. Yes, of course, manufacturing facilities uh, uh, should be in working condition during the audit. And this is where um, all the manufacturing uh, equipments and the testing happens. So this is also a challenge for foreign manufacturers. Then time limitation, uh, this certification is, takes quite long time to get uh, completed. Generally for FMCS, it is 180 days for foreign manufacturer and takes more than that. So uh, it should be started well time in time before accessing Indian market. And authority communication and best monitoring, uh, sometimes the communication with Indian uh, authority, which it's like uh, not uh, getting uh, response timely so uh, this is also challenging uh, to get all the information over email. So these are the major challenges. And if we see some uh, recent updates, so last in last one year, there have been 23 draft QCOs, uh, which covers almost 131 products. So the list is growing in BIS, and these are from different categories, uh, like chemical, steel, metals, electrical appliances. So different categories uh, being covered under the list. And also BIS is actively revising and formulating the BIS standard. So we have noticed more than 700 new standards have been formulated, meaning more compliance requirement. Also Manak Online, uh, which is uh, already in place, but uh, this was uh, used for the direct exports to India. But recently it is, uh, it is uh, in use that it will be used to report all the indirect exports to India as well. So these are some recent updates and uh, I think the next one is uh, next please. Yes, indeed. The Q&A session okay, so, next. So thank, yeah. yeah, thank you, Rashmi. Very good, thank you. And I hope you uh, got a good understanding of the basics of the BIS standard and now as said in the beginning, let's look at some of the pre-submitted questions. And I also have a number of questions submitted during this uh, webinar. And as suspected, we're over time. So apologies for that. But we'll steam ahead nonetheless with these questions and take a few from the, uh, from, uh, from the uh, chat, so to speak. OK. So we have uh, 10 pre-submitted questions uh, received from participants when they registered for this webinar. And uh, I'll just shoot them out and assign them to my colleagues. So question one, how to, how to determine correctly with reasonable due diligence what products are subject to India BIS license? Gagan, do you want to take this one, please? Yes. Yes, thank you. So I think the most uh, starting point for you is, uh, of course, is scoping or due diligence is to uh, understand the the Indian standard and the quality control orders that are listed in the BIS website. 
under scheme one where you need it's a mandatory requirement so then if the products are listed in scheme one then there is no escape if you have to do business or you have to manufacture the products in india then you need to secure bis license within the time frame mentioned in the quality control order so this is i think uh, uh, and then of course you need to then go for the indian standard as i also mentioned in my talk to see the current scope of this Indian standard, what it covers, what are the applications, and so on. So this is how I would uh, answer this question. Thank you. Thank you, Gagan. Next question. Uh, are you aware of any hold by BIS for applicants in Southeast Asia? Gagan, do you take this one? Over? Yes. Yeah, I think it's uh, corresponding. So this, this I think, uh, list is public. So BIS has a public list of the licensee, uh, means that those applicants who are getting license, and you can see these license, uh, there is a, uh, I think, active database, uh, which is a real-time database. Uh, so you can see if anybody is from Southeast Asia, of course, the country-wise, you can search this database. And uh, you can also see whether the uh, it's uh, I think for importers it's important Indian importers whether the license is active or it's uh, not active. So these are like uh, important because renewal is happening. So they have to be active to import or to manufacture. So but this is I think portal uh, which is database you can access. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. And the next question goes to Rashmi. So is a chemical product in mixture form also subject to BIS certification? Yes, uh, generally uh, BIS applies to uh, chemicals in pure form, uh, but it is suggested to refer uh, the Indian standards to check the applicability. Okay, thank you. And question four, are there other product categories subject to these requirements than those in scheme one? So Rashmi, do you want to take this one? Yes, Freddy, yes. Yes, there are other schemes and product categories and I also uh, listed those in the, my initial slides. So those product cat categories under conformity assessment, which requires uh, registration or mandatory certification. And all of them have different process and requirement to get those uh, certification or registration. Very good, thank you. And question five, we are ISO 9001, 14001, 45001 certified. What further requirements do we need to comply with to have a, a compliant management system? So this one goes to Gagan. I think this is a, a kind of different uh, requirement altogether, the BIS license, uh, regardless of these certifications, if your product is listed in under scheme one then you must apply and secure the bis license of course uh, iso 9001 is for quality so you will have dedicated people uh, handling in the quality department who can assist you and then you have environment uh, side of this also which probably if there are some testing or some uh, requirements that you need to fulfill in this indian standard that they will can assist but then this is completely different. You need to still apply and secure your BIS license if it is listed in scheme one. Thank you. Very good. Question number six, uh, what's the role for importer in India for the export uh, of another country? Uh, Gaga, do you want to, to take this one also? Yeah, I think it's more on the regulatory side. So. Uh, Indian importers, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I think the answers to question one uh, somewhat is that uh, uh, they need to ensure, of course, that this is uh, this have a valid license. Uh, the supplier or the foreign manufacturer that we are using uh, is having a valid license. So, so this means that the customs will allow imports into India and uh, maybe somewhat the question was not clear but i interpret that this is probably your uh, request if not uh, then i would request you to send your question and elaborate this uh, later part of this by email 
then we would be able to answer it uh, according to what you're looking for but this is like uh, something to check uh, and see that this is uh, active license is there and you can import this into india thank you very good and question number seven are thermoset polyurethanes subject to this certification i know that the thermoplastics are so rashmi do you want to take this one Yes. So yes, thermoplastics uh, for polyurethane thermoplastics uh, are under mandatory certification. The part one, uh, like the for this, the standard part one, two, three are available. But uh, we don't see that the thermoset polyurethanes are yet under this uh, best certification. So only for thermoplastics. Very good. Thank you. And number eight. Uh, if you supply a product product range subject to BIS license, is it mandatory to obtain a BIS license? Uh, Rashmi, please. Yes, uh, if products are listed under Scheme 1 for mandatory certification and the QCO has been implemented, it is must to get the license to access Indian market. Very good, thank you. And. Uh, Second to last question going to Gagan. Uh, what is the primary place to check for updates on quality control orders? As we have not uh, we have seen not seen all on the website of ISI. Yes, I think this is a good question also from the audience side uh, to track uh, uh, these product regulations where it is coming. So uh, so we recommend as reach law to go to e-gadget uh, which is the depository of all the legal uh, or the regulations but it has uh, a sea of regulations so that means that uh, you need some dedicated person and uh, probably you have to also select the line ministry uh, because this e-gadget will give you a lot of regulations or updates coming uh, from india as such it is not linked to the isi or the qco so it is always linked to the ministry uh, meaning the line the authority and uh, you need to select your product belonging to which ministry and then you have to follow this uh, but then you have to have uh, this uh, check uh, a weekly maybe uh, or bi weekly then uh, you you can report this to your to your project team and uh, have a kind of newsletter for this uh, unfortunately there is no newsletter from bis which will give you this probably it will come but not now so it is more of a proactive and uh, regular check on this e-gadget and then uh, later on it will come to the isi website and this also the other ministry if they are uh, displaying the qco at their website but e-gadget is the main central uh, website that you should know and we can share this if you contact us thank you very good thank you gaga and the last one uh, i think this is a question on postponement of the new omnibus technical regulation for machinery and electrical equipment awaited so i guess they're asking if there's a postponement to be waited for uh, or coming for this or how do you understand this rush rate please Yes, uh, it seems they are checking for the uh, implementation. So this is uh, this OTR regulation is a recent uh, QCO from uh, Ministry of Heavy Industries, uh, and it was uh, published uh, in August 2024 itself. And it has a deadline of one year. So most likely it will be implemented in uh, August 2025. And if any extension or postponed, uh, so that will come closer to the deadline meaning in august 2025 so we need to monitor by that time if there is any news and if they are extending this regulation very good thank you rashmi and i will take just a, a few uh, questions from the uh, from the chat i will uh, just combine some of these questions such as these two questions on on uh, on the uh, enforcement uh let me see uh how how is this license checked for example of foreign manufacturer through customs and then the second question how will customs check which products are within scope is it through the hs code so who wants to take this one 
Yeah, I think this is again a good question uh, for maintaining the compliances. So the and there are a lot of developments happening. Uh, so India has several ports if you are sending your material through seaport and uh, then uh, I would say the bulk of consignments are coming from the seaport. We have several seaports in India and uh, there is a digital uh, mechanism known as ice gate uh, your uh, I think uh, trade or logistics people must be aware of this portal where you need to or your importer or the freight forwarder uh, meaning the logistics uh, needs to provide certain information of the goods entering into India, which is also having uh, uh, HS code uh, 10 digits 8 digits uh, which define this uh, item and uh, But BIS uh, the QCO uh, usually do not have that uh, listed in the Indian standard, but uh, it is always uh, linked to the product and it's important that uh, you when you study the Indian standard this is correct uh, identification of the code HS code or uh, and this is uh, mapped with the BIS uh, license when uh, you enter your license detail in the Manak portal I think term was used in this and then you will see in more series so the government is controlling uh, the customs uh, officers will check uh, and uh, see whether the license is there on the portal for that licensee to allow to import goods into India. So I think it's more transparent, uh, more easy access for the custom officers, but it will grow in future. In I think BIS is working on it. It will have uh, its more digital and transparent mechanism of controlling the enforce, applying the enforcement here. So this is I would like to answer and provide some updates also what's happening on this side. Thank you. Very good. And just a couple of more questions. Uh, so one question was in case of raw materials which are in the mandatory list, uh, if these are used for the production of a product but chemically transformed so that the substance is not contained in the final product, are those also concerned by the BIS certification? Who wants to take this one? Okay, so this, uh, if you can repeat the last part of, uh, again. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll just repeat, repeat the whole thing. So in case uh, of raw materials, which are in the mandatory list, uh, are used for the production of a product, but, the chem but chemically transformed so that the substance is not contained in the final product. Are those also concerned by the BIS certification? So I guess they're talking about the substance that is transformed if it's on the list, but it's then uh, transformed into another sub, uh, substance not contained in the final product, would the BIS certification apply? Okay, I will I will handle it, and I, if if somebody wants to add it, uh, then I would say if your raw materials is listed, mandatory listing is there on the ISI, then you need the license. And for example, you are manufacturing that uh, outside India, then you would need the license if you're manufacturing the raw material at that site so you would need the license if uh, if it is coming to the India and uh, somebody in India is making uh, some uh, final product out of this then uh, the importer uh, uh, meaning that they will secure that the raw material is uh, having a valid license but then once it is imported uh, the further uh, whatever happening in India is not covered by the BIS but uh, the final product uh, the final product which is coming to the India or the final product which is manufactured in India if it is listed in this uh, ISI as such then you need the license uh, I hope I made some uh, clarification but again if there are corresponding or uh, some add-on or follow-up questions please contact in the interest of the time thank yeah, you indeed and uh, second to last question do foreign traders have to meet the same requirements set out for foreign manufacturers in BIS if uh, a foreign trader has appointed an AIR does the individual have to be an India resident so the answer to the next second question was yes but the first one Yes, I think this is uh, again foreign uh, traders do not need to apply for the license. They are not listed in the regulation. It's only manufacturers. So if you are trading, then you need to see where your material is coming from, uh, whether it's uh, the manufactured uh, where. So the manufacturer uh, of this uh, 
product needs to apply for the license so not uh, foreign traders so foreign traders uh, cannot apply for the license so meaning they don't need AIR also so they are out of the scope of this uh, requirement thank you very good very good and the last very practical question how can we easily check whether the, this regulation applies to our products uh, this, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I think uh, this is also the the first step is to go to the BIS. I think uh, uh, we have one slide in our presentation, but you have a website of BIS. Go to the uh, scheme one, which is the mandatory certification uh, scheme, and you will see the list of products, uh, all list of products and sub products there and uh, you can see whether uh, your product is listed in the scheme one so meaning that you would need the license you can also contact us with your product details we can also you know verify and check whether this is required and if rashmi would like to add to this uh, if you have something to add please yes for uh, foreign manufacturer if they are for, for this FMCS, they can check the scheme one and for other certifications and other products also there are as I showed in my one of the slide different certifications. So there is there are separate list where this can be checked. But yes, BIS website is the correct place uh, where one can check the product falling under which certification. Very good. Thank you. And that will be all the time we have time for today. And I said apologies for going over time. Uh, quite usual for our webinars but nonetheless thank you very much for your attention and of course thank you to, to Rashmi and Gaga for being the subject matter experts here but of course the biggest thank you goes to you who attended and stayed all the way to the end so here you can find our contact details feel free to contact us reach out for if you have any questions or, or need support happy to help and with that said thank you very much again and I wish you a very great day. Bye-bye.